The Half-Life universe is home to many terrible fates. The vast majority of the community believe that the possibility of being transformed into a stalker is by far the worst, but this is nothing in comparison to the atrocious dangers of a Combine-controlled Earth. In this universe, the human population lived in fear of what would happen to them. Anything was possible. Anyone could end up as a victim in this selection of awful existences. What was the worst fate? What made one experience worse than another? And would you rank these in the same order I have? Here, we explore them in this collection of terrible fates in the Half-Life universe. There were several horrendous fates that befell the population of Earth, but what made one worse than another? Isolation? Mutilation? Pain? A combination of these three elements. As this collection dives deeper, the fates will get worse. This is my interpretation and understanding of the worst possible things that could happen to a human in this chaotic universe, in order of severity. As we begin this journey into pandemonium and chaos, we start with something Dr. Wallace Breen claimed just before he was killed by Dr. Gordon Freeman. Dr. Freeman, you really shouldn't be out there. At the moment of synapse, as I teleport, this chamber will be bathed in deadly particles that have yet to be named by human science. Perhaps when I have the leisure to do the work myself, I'll name one of them after you. That way you won't be completely forgotten. When the singularity collapses, I will be far away from here, in another universe as a matter of fact. You, on the other hand, will be destroyed in every way it is possible to be destroyed, and even in some which are essentially impossible. Bathed in deadly particles, you will be destroyed in every way it is possible to be destroyed, and even in some which are essentially impossible. This sounds absolutely horrendous. We all know of the Chernobyl disaster and the aftermath of what these levels of radiation did to the human body. Even the smallest interaction with a radioactive element has been documented to leave someone in extreme pain, decomposing as the cells struggle to retain stability. Nervousness, confusion, nausea, vomiting loss of consciousness, and a burning sensation of the skin. If the fate Breen alludes to is in any way similar to radiation poisoning, that would already be a fate worse than death. On top of this, destroyed in every way it is possible. I would like to think that this would be a short death, but sadly, I think it would be long and painful. Moving over to the small town of Ravenholm, we meet Father Gregory. Ravenholm was a resistance town that was discovered by the Combine. To take out this threat, the Combine bombarded this area with headcrab shells and, upon impact, these parasitic balls of flesh caused chaos as they leapt onto the heads of the population and took control. The town priest, Father Gregory, watched as this chaos unfolded, and he felt it was his duty to free his flock from the clutches of chaos. He was able to defend himself fairly well against this danger. However, over time, he fell to the isolation and trauma that had happened. For an unknown period of time, he worked alone with the sole aim to save those he had known from torment. This was not as painful as being bathed in deadly particles, but the terror he would have felt having watched those he loved in constant pain, and only he could stop it. Over his time alone in Ravenholm, it appeared that he became manic, humanized his weapon, Annabelle, and pushed himself to do the most inhumane actions to the people he had once known in order to free them. Father Gregory suffered an awful fate for some time, and he deserves his place in this awful collection. Throughout the early years of the Combine's occupation of Earth, 
two Resistance members attempted to create a safer way to travel between Dr. Kleiner's lab and Black Mesa East, two of the main Resistance bases. During their efforts, they developed a teleportation system based off of their work at Black Mesa. At one point, they believed that they had something that worked and a cat was used to test whether it was safe for humans. This teleportation experiment did not go as planned and something awful happened to the cat. Something that would give Barney Calhoun nightmares for years. Its owner would be lucky to never find out what happened to it. While Half-Life 2 does not elaborate on what happened to the cat, cut audio from the Half-Life 2 beta does. I had to turn the cat right side out again, Gordon, to make sure it was a cat. Now, if the cat had died during this event, it would have still been awful, but what if it did not? Regardless, animal deaths are awful in any media. To Alex and Gordon's luck, when they used the teleporter, it appears that these kinks had been ironed out. It was still a terrible fate. This one, I believe, will split people. Stasis. Throughout the series, Corporal Adrian Shepard and Dr. Gordon Freeman were placed in stasis by the Dream Man. This was a void that existed to appear outside of time and acted as a sort of storage container for the people that the G-Man and his employers believed would be useful in the future. This fate so far was always against the will of the person that was in storage. Gordon was threatened with death if he did not agree, and Adrian was just placed in there. Now, from Gordon's perspective, he defeated the Nylanth, essentially blinked, and he was on Earth 20 years later. He did not have time to actually think about what had happened at Black Mesa. He was thrown right back into the action. The dread of this fate is that so much had happened in his absence. Whatever friends or family he may have had were likely gone. His opportunity to fight had been taken away from him. In stasis, he was unconscious, stored without any control of his fate. Gordon was released from stasis, but what about Adrian Shepard? As far as we know, he is still in there, unaware of anything that had occurred after Black Mesa. His friends and family likely think him dead. Which fate is worse? Waking up after 20 years and finding out that the whole world has changed and the chance to stop it was taken away from you, or never waking up again, lost in a timeless void. On the subject of stasis, within Aperture Science, Chell also faced a similar dilemma. She was placed in a stasis chamber after she had fought so hard to escape the facility. Chell woke up many years later in the future and once again fought against the murderous AI of Aperture. She eventually made it to the surface, only to find out that the Combine had invaded the planet in her absence. She had left one horrible experience for another. Anyone she would have known was also gone. So, once again, would you rather stay unconscious, essentially in a death state, unaware of all of the awful things that had happened, or wake up to face them? Picture this. You are a scientist at Black Mesa. Over the past few days, your boss, Dr. Wallace Breen, has instructed your team, Anomalous Materials, to perform a pretty risky experiment. It has been a very stressful few days. You have objected that the parameters of this experiment may result in a resonance cascade, but your boss only wants results. The Xenian crystal sample is much larger than what you have placed in the anti-mass spectrometer before, and the safety parameters have been nudged a little in order to accommodate this change. On the day of the experiment, power outages fill the facility, but you have one thing you are looking forward to, your microwave casserole. That was how Dr. Arnie Magnuson felt on the day of the Black 
Mesa incident. Unfortunately for Magnuson, Dr. Freeman, for some reason, entered the kitchen and decided to nuke the casserole. Whether this was an accident or not, this was something Magnuson would not forgive or forget easily. This would have easily ruined Arnie's day, but it was not the worst thing that happened that day. A resonance cascade did occur, and shortly after, the Combine invaded the planet. For 20 years, Arnie thought about that casserole and the man that had destroyed it. If you think about it, this was likely the last casserole he would ever have. The Combine essentially poisoned the planet in order to establish control. Xenian wildlife and plant life claimed huge chunks of the environment. This was not as bad as the Black Mesa incident, but it sure was something awful to experience. The worst part about this situation was that when Gordon did return, Magnuson could not truly be too angry at him, as the Freeman became the symbol and one of the leaders of the resistance against the Combine. Yet, he still harboured a grudge. I guess this is not an awful fate, but the idea of losing your last microwave meal to a scientist that either did not know how a microwave worked or did it on purpose is something that would play on your mind, especially through those hard times. This is where the fates become more uncomfortable and basically horrendous. The Barnacle is one of these, and I feel that they are often overlooked. So many lives were lost to this species, and this is a fate I would not wish on anyone. These disgusting creatures were discovered mostly throughout Zen and a post resonance cascade Earth. They often formed in groups on ceilings of highly populated regions, their bodies latched to the ceiling, which consisted of a large gaping mouth with a row of horrendously sharp teeth, and from this mouth, a long tongue hung all the way down to the ground. It would be a fairly fast death, but at that moment would feel like a lifetime. Here, the barnacle simply waited for anything to touch their tongue, just like a Venus flytrap waited for their prey to activate their sensitive hairs. Of course, after years of Combine and Xenian occupation, most of the population of Earth knew to avoid these tongues. This is why it made it so much worse when they accidentally triggered one. Almost instantly, the barnacle grabbed onto anything it could of its meal. In some cases, the tongue has been stated as extremely sticky, which made it impossible to detach from. In others, like Larry, a barnacle wrapped its tongue around his ankle. To his luck, he was able to hold onto something, but many did not have this luxury. In what could have been 30 seconds, this would have felt like a lifetime for their prey as they looked up at the huge mouth and sharp teeth as they were slowly pulled closer and closer to the creature, each second a step closer to death. The horrific thoughts of knowing their fate would be haunting to this victim as they moved closer towards the creature unable to do anything but panic. This, however, was not the worst part. As the barnacle eventually pulled its meal to its mouth, the victim was eaten alive, piece by piece, until eventually, nothing was left. The lesson here is to wear a spiked helmet just like Larry, and if you are caught, keep a weapon handy. The fate of being eaten alive by a barnacle is truly awful, and this collection only gets worse. What could be worse than being eaten alive? Being transformed into a stalker. For those who rebelled against the Combine, they were often met with more of a tragic fate. They became a part of the Combine's workforce as a stalker, 
this happened to many against their will. Interestingly enough, in my stalker video, there were a few comments that claimed that they would willingly go through it. We won't question that. In this traumatic process, the victims were transformed. Their hands and legs were amputated and replaced with metallic limbs. This atrocious process was performed in order to reduce the mobility of the human and to enhance their ability as a worker. Their new hands allowed them to interface with combine terminals. On their faces, a plate was installed, and in the place of their eyes, welding lasers were implanted, once again to allow them to perform their duties and in some cases, protect combine regions from intruders. We can only imagine how painful this procedure would have been on this victim. Many of their organs were removed until they were essentially a skeletal frame, and to keep them just about alive, a saline solution was used to keep them running. To keep these new cogs in the combine workforce efficient, they were subjected to mental conditioning. In doing this, they became completely subservient and followed every order of their master. They lost who they were, what they were and became mindless drones, pure objects in the combine machine. This was once considered the worst fate in the Half-Life universe and it really is a fate worse than death, yet this collection is not yet complete. After the headcrab species migrated from Zen to Earth, they actively sought out humanoid hosts to control. This process was absolutely terrifying for anyone unfortunate enough to encounter this species. Upon the successful leap and attachment to their victim's head, an abhorrent and brutal experience began. The headcrab used its hidden beak to break into the skull of its victim, and with this, took control of its brain. In doing this, the humanoid simply became a host as the parasite essentially used them as a puppet. This was of course extremely painful for their human hosts, and they felt everything. As the headcrab injected a chemical mixture into the human's bloodstream, mutations occurred. In most cases, their rib cages ripped open, their fingers extended, their flesh fell off their bodies and revealed bone and raw nerve endings. The humans were completely aware of their predicament and had no way to stop it. They were completely at the mercy of the head crab. The parasites did not care how their humans felt, and as they wandered the wasteland, they walked through fire, water, and other hazardous regions. From the perspective of a combine soldier, a civilian, or resistance member, these headcrab zombies were just another threat that could cause them harm. To deal with them, they were fired at. The humans felt this pain, but the headcrab made use of their hosts as long as they could before the human body was completely worn out. The worst headcrab to encounter was the poison headcrab. Upon attachment, it sent its poison through the host's body. The body bloated, mutated, and allowed multiple of this variation to latch onto the victim. The human was forced to constantly walk at an angle as many headcrabs used them to traverse the region, all while the burning toxic substance flowed through their veins. They would have felt every little bit of pain. Death would have been a welcome release. At least the stalker had no idea of what they were. The Combine Empire were responsible for several of the fates in this collection. Yet, one of the worst by far was a result of a Xenian parasitic infection. Zen was home to many dangerous and toxic flora and fauna, and many of these also migrated to Earth during the portal storms. In the quarantine zone of City 17, an entire distillery became infested by Xenian plant life. 
The Combine wanted to limit this infestation, and to do this, they sent in hazmat workers to clear it out. An issue arose, however, when one of these workers' suits ripped and he inhaled a Xenian fungal spore. Upon its entry into this human host, the seedling grew. As time passed, Jeff noticed that something was wrong as his body bloated and Xenian coffers grew out of his back. These coffers then shot out their own spores into the environment. At some point, Jeff became unable to control his own actions as the fungal infection took over his brain. Jeff would have been in agonizing pain, unable to do anything about the situation as a toxic sludge moved around his body. New skin grew over his hazmat suit and his head even split into two separate pieces. In between these, a teeth formed and his head became a mouth. This excruciating pain would have left Jeff irritable to anything that moved around him. He could not see as a result of the drastic change to his head, but he could hear exceptionally well. For some time, the fungal infection used Jeff to wander the distillery as it spread its seed to further the infestation. Jeff was locked inside of his body, but his body barely resembled the human he once was. Many would like to believe that as Jeff's head had split into two separate pieces, his consciousness would have died as the fungal infection simply reanimated his corpse. Yet, this concept art suggests he was alive. All he could do was call for help. Death was the only escape, and this escape fell into the hands of Alex Vance. She had the choice of whether or not to activate a trash compactor after she had locked him inside of one. The activation, in my opinion, would have been a mercy killing and freed him from this awful fate. The fates so far have been awful, and in this final piece of this collection, we explore something that is truly terrifying. The worst fate I believe I have found so far in this universe. The experience of becoming a host for a headcrab is awful enough on its own, yet there was something I discovered that made it so much worse. In the sewers of City 17, there was the Underground Railroad, a group of connected resistance bases that allowed almost safe passage from the Combine controlled City 17 out into the other bases safe from Combine control. However, headcrabs were noted to wander these sewers. When a victim fell prey to one of these headcrabs, they had a chance of falling into the toxic waste and drainage that came from the city, and they became stuck. Over time, more waste was released into the area and these headcrab zombies fell deeper and deeper into the waste. The headcrabs appeared to be content regardless of the situation, but from the perspective of the host, they were trapped in toxic waste, unable to control their own bodies. As the headcrab that controlled them moved, they sank deeper. Eventually, all they could do was stay there, stagnant as they decayed and rotted. This was a fate worse than Jeff. At least Jeff could move around, and he did eventually have the opportunity to be put out of his misery. In this case, they could feel everything, but there was a chance that they would never be found, and the head crab would keep them alive for as long as possible in never ending torment. The Half Life universe is, quite bluntly, an awful place to live. We do not know of the other atrocities of the Combine or how other worlds have treated their population. But on planet Earth in the early 2000s, many people suffered an excruciating end. 
Maybe a stalker victim simply did not pick up that can, while others complied in order to avoid hazmat duty. They stayed within the city borders to avoid barnacles and agreed with their alien overlords to have as easy as a life as they could. Having looked into these fates, it appears that it would just be easier to drink that water that made them forget the horrors of this world. Maybe the true worst fate is that of a Half-Life fan, hopeful for a new game that will conclude a story that started over 20 years ago, the fabled Half-Life 3. As you can tell by the last few videos on the channel, I have looked into some of the worst fates in games and I thought why not make a collection of the worst I could find. There are so many others that I have not included, but I wanted to see how well this video did to see if it was worth exploring the universe deeper for more. I struggle to pick between Decaying and Jeff for the worst fates. I believe they are both pretty awful. The factor that placed the king at the most severe was that many of these victims would never be found. They would be stuck in a constant state of agony as they decayed. Jeff, on the other hand, actually had the possibility to be discovered by Alex Vance and put out of his misery. Overall, I really enjoyed putting this one together. It was a little different and focused on the darker themes. This was a collection of terrible fates in the Half-Life universe. If you enjoyed this, then give it a like, and if you really enjoyed this, then consider subscribing for more content like this. If you disliked this, then give it a dislike. I appreciate you watching anyway. As always, thank you to my amazing Gold Tier patrons and channel members who got access to this video a little bit early. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruba Mendoza, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, BG Games, Aprovis, and Arnis. What was the worst fate on this list? Which fate did I miss? And what would you like to see next time? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one. Thank <laughs> you.